Hi guys, Rian here. Today I'm going to show you my absolute favourite team with Kokomi, which is the Electro Charge team, or some may call it the Taser team. I did a short showcase of this in my video yesterday, and a lot of you seems to like it. So I thought, let's go even more in depth for this team, and talk about how to actually build it. So let's start with my Kokomi build. For her weapon, you can use any HP% percent weapon. They can be her iconic weapon, prototype ember or even trilling tails or dragon. For this showcase, I prefer to use prototype ember and not the trilling tails because I will always be switching to Kazuha for the viridescent debuff. So I will start with Kokomi to apply hydro, then switch to Kazuha for hydro swirl. Then switch to Fisher or Raiden for off field DPS before switching back to Kokomi. The sequence of character swap doesn't fit well with the trilling tails, so I prefer to use the prototype ember for this team. For my artifact, to be honest, it doesn't make much of a difference. If you want to maximize damage on Kokomi, use the 4 piece hydro set. But after playing around for a day, her damage comes from a mix of normal attacks and electro charge reactions. Using the Hydro Maiden set, Hydro Melee Leaf set, or even the 4 piece Melee Leaf set is fine. However, be careful with the 4 piece Melee Leaf set. If you are using the 4 piece Melee Leaf set, you need to use Kokomi's Jellyfish before using Oz. This is because Oz snapshots Fischl's attack when it is casted, and there is no point buffing Fischl after Oz is on the field. You may be wondering, if almost half of her damage comes from Electro Charge, wouldn't it be better to build Kokomi with Elemental Mastery? Well, I tested this and the outcome is kind of bad. The problem is the damage from Electro Charge is based on the character who triggers the reaction. So, let me just demonstrate what I'm trying to say. I'm at close to 900 EM. I'm using Sacrificial Fragments with all my EM artifacts. So for the first test, I'm going to apply Electro with Kujo Sara first, then trigger Electro Charge with Kokomi. 9.2k, 9.2k. That is per reaction. Means it's actually hitting for 18k per Electro Charge. Nine point two k, nine point two k. That looks really good, right? But what if I reverse it? Means now Kujo Sara triggers it. It drops to one point one k only. This is the danger of this build. If your Electro DPS does not have Elemental Mastery and she triggers it, your damage is going to drop. And you cannot control this. So I'm going to show you with Raiden Shogun. It is so random. Sometimes it's nine k, sometimes it's one k. And you have no way of controlling this. It's like 50-50. You see 1k, 1k. 1k, 1k. And this is why I don't think Elemental Mastery build is going to work. However, there is a way to make this viable and here is where her team comps come in. To play this Electro Charge team, of course your second character is going to be an Electro character. For this, you will want an Electro character who can deal off-field DPS, such as Fischl, Beidou or Raiden. I've tested all of these three characters and I personally find Fischl to be the best. With Fischl, you practically have 100% Electro Charge uptime. This gets even better if you have Constellation 6. Your team's DPS just go nuts with damage numbers flying all over the screen. Beidou is also very good, however Beidou will be having energy recharge issues if you are running her as the only Electro team member. As for Raiden, her off-field DPS is the lowest out of the three. However, she's perfect when Kokomi's elemental burst is on cooldown. If you're using Raiden with Kokomi, both of them practically just take turns to use their elemental burst. Kokomi's jellyfish provides off-field hydro for Raiden. Raiden's Eye of Stormy Judgment provides off-field electro for Kokomi. The best part about Kokomi Raiden team is Raiden Shogun can regain Kokomi's elemental burst super quickly. Kokomi has a 70 energy cost, but this is no problem with the electro archon around. It is a win-win situation. As for your third member, you will want to use a Viridescent support. Kazuha, Venti and Sucrose all fit into this team nicely. Sadly, Jin and Sayu doesn't because you don't need another healer. Kokomi is more than enough. Basically, all you need to do is swirl in between switching your characters for the Viridescent debuff and you are good to go. Kazuha, Venti and Sucrose also provides a lot of crowd control for the team. If you are playing an Electro Charge team, fighting multiple enemies is where the team is strongest at. Pair this with Venti and you can clear Spiral Abyss even with 100 enemies, no problem. However, I'm going to admit, Electro Charge isn't that great if you're fighting single targets. This is because the lightning doesn't bounce around and there is no crowd for you to control. This is why Electro Charge teams are not good against world bosses or Spiral Abyss with only one boss. Speaking about Sucrose and Kazuha, let me bring back the topic on Elemental Mastery. Remember when I say you should not build pure Elemental Mastery on Kokomi because you won't get the damage if another character triggers the reaction. 
Well, this doesn't apply to Sucrose and C2 Kazuha. Both Sucrose and C2 Kazuha can transfer elemental mastery to the entire team. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to show you Kokomi's electro charge damage first. 1.85, 1.85. 1.85, 1.85. This is without Sucrose buff. Now let's try using Sucrose buff. 4.35, 4.35. That's a big improvement. And this applies to your entire team. Because Sucrose buffs the entire team's elemental mastery, it doesn't matter who triggers. It doesn't matter if it's Raiden Shogun or Kokomi. You see, my Electro Charge is 4.9k, 5.2k. This is, this is a big upgrade. And I'm not changing any of their gears. Kokomi is still using her usual gears. Raiden Shogun is still using her usual gears. It's just a synergy. As for the fourth team member, it is kind of flexible. Typically, if you are playing an Electro Charge team with Chao, your fourth team member has to be a healer. But for Kokomi, you can stack even more DPS. This is the major difference between Chao and Kokomi. Although the team and playstyle is the same, Kokomi has the option for an extra sub DPS. More sub DPS means more damage. Another reason why Kokomi is better than Chao in certain scenarios is because of her jellyfish attack radius. It is just so damn huge. I said certain scenarios, not all scenarios, okay? I can already hear all the angry Chao fans typing in the comment section. Calm down. Kokomi's jellyfish attack has a large radius and its individual attacks is also AoE, which is very good for spreading the electro charge effect around. But for Chao, you will need everyone to be grouped together first for the maximum electro charge effect. I also just love how Raiden's coordinated attack and Kokomi's jellyfish without their burst is able to keep spreading electro charge effect. Since we're on the topic of comparing Kokomi with other hydro characters, Kokomi's jellyfish stays on the field for 12 seconds, which is way longer than Mona. This is why Mona doesn't work with electro charge teams. Personally, my favorite 4th team member is another Electro sub DPS for Electro Resonance. This means if you're running Fischl as your 2nd team member, you can also run Raiden as your 4th team member. This guarantees your entire team's elemental burst to be back super quickly, allowing you to spam your burst non-stop. Fischl, Beidou and Raiden are of course the best options, but if you don't have these characters, Kujo Sara, Electro Kerching or even Electro main character is also possible. They may not be the best combination, but it still kind of works. Kujo Sara is also a very good pair with Fischl and Kazuha because they both can snapshot Sara's attack buff. Here you can see my showcase with Kokomi, Fischl, Kazuha and Raiden. All four of them work perfectly together. For the first rotation, I'll be using Kokomi as the main DPS and Kazuha will swirl for more damage. Fischl and Raiden will be doing off-field damage and trigger electro charge reactions. When Kokomi is on cooldown, I will swirl electro with Kazuha and use Raiden Shogun as my main DPS. I will also make sure to put Kokomi's jellyfish for continuous electro charge reactions. Overall, this makes an excellent team. My second team here is sort of a 4 star version with Kokomi. I'll be using Beidou, Sucrose and Fischl. Here you can use Sucrose with Trilling Tails for more attack buff. As long as you're constantly mixing Electro and Hydro and trying to group the enemies together, this team is very strong. It only becomes weak when there is one guy remaining. But if you don't want to play a double electro team, Seng Chu is also a very good option. Seng Chu does a lot of off-field damage with his rain sword and has a 90% rain sword uptime if you build him correctly. Seng Chu can also benefit Kokomi with his constellation too, that decreases the enemy's hydro resistance by 15%. The best part is, Seng Chu is similar to Raiden Shogun when it comes to energy. Seng Chu and Kokomi provides a lot of energy for one another. Each of Seng Chu's E generates 5 hydro particles, while Kokomi herself generates 4 to 6 hydro particles over time. 
To be honest, I don't know why Kokomi's energy gain isn't consistent, but it is still very good. This also means Singchu and Kokomi are now considered the two best hydro batteries in the game. When you put the two best hydro batteries in the game, it doesn't matter if you have 70 or 80 energy costs, you're going to regain your burst very easily. But if you don't want to run an Electro Sub DPS or Sing Chiu, you can also use other characters like Zhongli or Elbedo, who can deal off field damage and do not interrupt the Electro Charge reactions. Zhongli is there of course for his shield and 20% elemental resistance shred. Elbedo is there for his off field geo damage. Elbedo is also a very nice option because he's able to increase your team's elemental mastery even further, which is really nice with Electro Charge. I've seen a few people try to mix Electro Charge with Xiangling, but I don't think it's a very good team. Your elemental reactions get mixed up and it's slightly counterintuitive. Personally, I would just stick to pure electro charge team, meaning electro sub DPS, Joe sub DPS, or Sing Chiu. Anyway, this is my complete guide for Kokomi's electro charge team. I hope you guys see why this team works so well, and I would even say this is the best team for Kokomi. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. I'll be uploading more build and team guides for Kokomi soon. As always, thank you for watching.